Hello everyone, welcome to Marcus Tech Tips. Today I would like to open up my 13 inch mid-2009 MacBook Pro. The reason I'm doing this is because once devices get old, as you can see mine is already a bit battered over here, um, it'll come in handy to be able to open your computer up and see what's inside and eventually clean it up. There are loads of things you can do once your device get old. Uh, gets old, sorry. So one thing you need to know is that um, in general, all 13 inches MacBook Pro, except for the one that are Retina display, have the same sort of um, parts association. In the inside, if you open it up, the parts will be placed in more or less the same locations. So for whatever model you're about to watch this, aside from the Retina, I repeat, um, the, the location of the parts is relatively the same. So we have many screws here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws. Um, there are three screws that are slightly longer than the other, so I'm going to show you what I mean. There we go. So uh, all the screws that um, are in the upper right corner, so that screw, this one, and this one are this size. They're a bit longer, so I'm going to, I've already opened them up so I can go a bit faster. So these three are the longest ones. All the other ones are smaller ones. There we go. Now I opened it up. So um, any regular school screwdriver will do. You don't need anything very special there. So let me open it up. So if you had this device for a while, you're probably going to notice the device is definitely not clean. So mine's full of dust in this case. So one thing you need to know is that so large pieces of dust can be taken away. That's not a problem. There we go. Put it over here. Um, however, you must know that um, you must absolutely not use one of these abrasive cloths that, um, uh, that have the magnetic sort of dust thing that just sweeps them up. Um, these can do false contacts, it can eventually um, permanently damage your device, so I really recommend not doing that. So, one way you can do this is to come with um, one of these very light um, uh, abrasive cloths, so the ones you can use for LCD screens or all these things, or if you want to go a bit more efficient, but a bit more risky, you may also use um, uh, you know, a, a little a vacuum cleaner, but be careful with it. There are also small vacuum cleaners that you can get. They're USBs that are pretty good for computers. These are not very strong and they do the job, so I also recommend getting those. So now that our computer is open, let me just show you around. So this is the motherboard. So we have a couple of components here. So this component probably goes to the screen as it's connected here. So I'm going to try to make it a bit more clear. So this component probably goes to the screen. We have our RAM sticks over here, which can be easily taken away as long as you um, put these little tabs to the side and the RAM sticks just pop off. So that's not very difficult to do. Make sure that you do not have any remaining static electricity on you because you can eventually damage the devices. So be careful with that as well. So here we have the RAM sticks. Um, over here we have different connectors that connect to the components. So for example, we have one for the hard drive that gets connected here. We have one that gets connected to the um, the super drive that we have over here. And another one gets connected to, um, I'm not quite sure what this is to be honest, but it's another one of these components. It could be the keyboard or it could be um, the screen again. I'm not sure. In any case, here you have the CPU heatsink, so this is the fan, there's the heatsink below that. And um, over here we also have our battery. Now, um, the battery and if I'm not mistaken, there's also a connector over here for the battery. So when getting rid of batteries or getting rid of any electronic components, make sure to get these components um, to where they belong. So don't just throw them in the trash or anything stupid with them such as lighting them on fire or everything that um, YouTube kids do these days just make sure that it gets discarded properly because it does contain chemicals that are harmful to the environment so be green be eco-friendly that being said 
As long as you clean them without being too abrasive and being careful with all the remaining static shocks, you may do it and it will definitely not be a problem. Yes, any components can be easily removed just as long as you remove the screws that go to it. Um, I'm going to remove the hard drive to give you an idea of what it looks like. So what you can do is you can remove the little screws here that keep the um, hard drive in place. So I'm gonna let me do that here. So um, one of the great thing about these screws is that these screws don't come off. You can just unscrew them, but they stay uh, stuck to the little plastic board, which is one great thing so you don't have to worry about losing them. So once you did that, you just take this part off. Here you don't have anything else. Okay, so I'm gonna turn over here so that it becomes a bit more clear. Okay, so that part that you removed to the side, I removed it from here. Okay, um, took the screws off and removed it. Then another thing you can do is that to um, take away the hard drive, you just need to pull on this little tab here and the hard drive pops off. Now be careful because there is a cable and this is the SATA cable. It can be easily taken away just by unplugging it here. So I'm going to do that just for the heck of it. There we go. Be careful with it. And that's it. This is my hard drive. And this is my SATA connector. So this is um, power and this is data. And in case I need to replace my hard drive, I just need to put a new hard drive in. I'm going to put mine back. Just snap it back into position. Reconnect it. Perfect. Make sure that the cable is laid flat onto the device. There we go. You also have to put in first like this and then the other side. It has to be first put in from the outside in. Like this. So, there we go. Then once this fits into position, I'm just going to put the little piece back in and that should hold the screws in place. As you can see, the little orange parts, let's see if I can focus here. So this little part here, okay, is used to basically um, keep the hard drive in place. So there's another half circle on the board and when you just screw it back in, it'll keep the screw that keeps the hard drive um, inside in place. So I'm going to put this back in. Screw this back into position. And that's it. And now my hard drive is secured. Anything else can also be changed. You can also change um, other components such as the super drive. Um, just by unscrewing a couple of screws to the side here and by unplugging the connector to make sure it doesn't snap. So let me show that here. So you can do that just by making sure that the um, connector doesn't get broken because otherwise you won't be able to use it. But aside from that, that's about it. So once you finish doing that, as you can clean the board, see, it's full of dust, but I guess, you know, that's how things go. Once you finish, very easily, you put it back in, not a big deal. Um, I, rec I do recommend to keep little magnets together to keep all the screws aside, but I mean that's really optional. Once you finish that, it's just easy as screwing it back in place, just putting all the screws back in, and the job is done. So that's it for the 13-inch um, MacBook Pro teardown. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Marco's Tech Tips. I always uh, tweet about anything that I will eventually post. And um, yeah, and if you stay tuned, you might be able to find something that could be interesting or useful for you. So thank you very much for watching. I'm Marco from Marco's Tech Tips and see you soon. Bye.